This could be a very significant and unexpected problem. And I've seen this over and over and over again. That what happens is there may be a facility and they have all the wrong things happening. They have capacitors, they have drives, they have a lot of harmonics, but they've been lucky that with the capacitors online, the resonance is somewhere up out of the way where it's not directly interacting with the harmonics. They didn't know that. They just didn't have any problems to get concerned about. But then the utility makes a change and the utility short circuit current maybe reduces. Maybe they take a line out. That resonance shifts. And all of a sudden, if that resonance shifts and it happens to land close or on one of the resonance currents that is being produced by uh, the load, all of a sudden, why are things failing? We didn't do anything. What happened? And then there's an investigation, which I've done a lot of this over the years, that you find out that, oh, gee, so the utility actually made a switching change and their equivalent short circuit current reduced. And when it reduced, that resonance frequency shifted, it ended up causing problems. So you might think, this is getting to be uh, a little scary. All these different things that can occur and we don't know about it. What, what do you do? Well, the solution for this, which is what I'm gonna talk about uh, towards the end, is you identify, do you have a lot of harmonics? Do you have capacitors? And then what can you do to try to fix this so that you don't have these problems? That's what harmonic filtering is all about. Back in the early days of harmonics, this used to be almost like a, a roulette wheel. It's like, yeah, I did say that, like a roulette wheel. That what people would do, and I remember these days, is they would model a system every which way upside down and inside out to look at every possible resonance condition that they might have. And then like, whew, good. Looks like if this happens, we're okay. If this happens, we're okay. And, you know, basically like spinning the wheel. Because everything may, may be okay today, you look at all the different combinations, but in the future, again, if the utility makes changes or something else changes, that all goes out the window. So the most surefire way to deal with harmonics today is don't spin the wheel. If you're gonna have capacitors, design the capacitor bank as a filtered or a tuned capacitor bank. And then you can basically anchor in where the resonance is going to be. You can fix the resonance and move it in a frequency, move it to a frequency where you're not going to see the problems. That's what I'm going to be showing you. To continue this, the general trends are the higher the short circuit current, the higher the resonance frequency, which normally is kind of where you want to go, unless you're sliding up into a like a seventh or something like that, that could be a problem. The lower the short circuit current, the resonance frequency tends to become lower. And in general, when you have resonance and harmonics at lower frequencies, that tends to cause bigger problems because you have larger harmonic currents at lower frequencies. I'm not saying higher frequencies won't be an issue, but lower frequencies tend to be worse. The larger the capacitor bank, the lower the resonance, the smaller the capacitor bank the higher the resonance. So the more capacitors you put online, the larger the bank, the resonance frequency shifts lower. So you, what people would do is they evaluate all the different switching combinations, but I said you're just kind of spinning the wheel, trying to avoid it. 